welcome to Collie Country. My name's Kim. Today, we're gonna to be planting tomatoes. As this is a new area for me, I'm gonna do a bit of an experiment this year. So I'm gonna plant, I think most of my tomatoes in here in the greenhouse, so they're at least a bit protected from the bugs. I'm also gonna plant some outside that aren't protected by the greenhouse. Um, they'll still have a little bit of shade from some of the, the bigger trees around and they're sort of next to a shade area. Um, but they still get plenty of sun there, plenty of morning sun. Um, so yeah, today, planting my tomatoes. All right, I have heaps of different varieties. Um, we repotted these tomatoes, oh, like a week ago. Most of them were only like this big, like this, this little weedy bunch. Um, but then they've grown like so much. So you can see how much they've grown since we repotted them and separated them all. Um, most of the varieties I'm planting are indeterminate varieties, which means they'll, given the right conditions and not being taken down by disease and things like that, they will just keep growing and keep producing fruit. I have one bunch of determinant varieties or bush varieties of tomatoes, which means they already a predetermined size and predetermined amount of fruit that's in their genetics. The determinant variety that I'm planting is called KY1. I planted it before, it's done really well for me. So I think I'm gonna plant all of those ones outside and then I'll plant the indeterminate varieties in here. But I'll go through them as we go and I'll show you how I plant tomatoes, how I do it all the time and it seems to work quite well. All right, so the varieties we're planting. I've got this Brandywine Red, which is a potato leaf variety. Um, the Brandywines are a potato leaf variety, just like the Brandywine Pink we've got here. It's a potato leaf variety compared to say like a, a normal tomato leaf variety. I think the Brandywines are the only ones I've got that are the potato leaf. Yeah, looks like it. Oh. Well, oh, this Rumsey's red. Oh, maybe. Anyway, let's plant some tomatoes. Got some really gross old eggs here. They're pretty old. So what happens is in every tomato hole goes an egg. Helps with the calcium to reduce, say, uh, your blossom end rot. So that's what we do. Every tomato gets an egg. Now, the reason I'm using my hands is I cannot, for the life of me, find any of my garden tools. So we'll just do it the rough way. All right. So with your tomato plants, you want to bury them quite deep. They have, I don't know if you can see all these little hairs on the stalk. And so if you bury them, say, up to these first set of leaves, you'll give them more of a chance to set a better 
sturdier root system. I'm going to be digging dirt out of my fingernails for days. That's all right. All right. In goes an egg. And what have we got here? Mortgage lifter. Tomato plants are pretty tough. They can take a bit of a beating. So he was, you know, he was quite tall, about the same size as this one in the pot. Now we've only got that much sticking out, but that'll give him a chance to get a really good root system. Helpful. Need to remember that this one's a Costaluda Fiorentino. I probably said that wrong, but it's the only one of those ones I just broke the stick, so. Video, Alright, that's this greenhouse planted out with tomatoes. God damn. Alright, so I haven't put any compost down in here because I've buried a heap of fish scraps through this. I'm just gonna see how it goes. I don't have any compost and I had fish scraps, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. It just needs a good watering in and a mulch. It'll be good to go. Now in front of these tomatoes, because it's quite a wide bed, but I've got uh, planted a heap of radish seeds um, and then a heap of beetroot seeds all down this side and on this side is some more radish seeds. So we should have plenty of radishes and beetroots coming up in this greenhouse. So. Jackson and I finally cleaned out that atrociousness that was the sweet potato bed and we got a pretty good haul between this one and another one that was over the other side. We actually did pretty good. In here though we've planted some leeks and in this side some spring onions. They're just little, little babies but they'll grow. Let me show you what we got out of this, out of these sweet potato beds. All right, now we didn't get a huge amount, as in kilos of them, but pretty happy with what they, with what we got. Pretty happy with what we got, considering it was complete and utter neglect. Um, yeah, what size is this one? It's like the size of my head. So yeah, enough for a few feeds here anyway. We were pretty happy with it. One purple one, the rest all orange. Just gonna leave them out here to cure for, I don't know, a few days, a week, whatever I feel like doing. The dogs had to chew on this one. So yeah, we'll cure them and then it should make the skins a bit tougher and they should store a lot longer. And considering it's Still pretty humid here. I don't know how well it's going to work, but it's not going to take long to eat all of these anyway.
So I've got all my tomatoes in here living around. I think I must have gotten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So I've gotten 23 tomato plants in my greenhouse, which is pretty good. Um, I still got plenty of beds to, to weed out and get ready. So I've got plenty of more space. But I think in here, in front of some of these tomato plants, I might try and plant some like bok choy and things like that, or pak choy. Um, and I've got this lovely plant. So um, grows the roots. Oh, I keep forgetting what it's called for whatever reason. The name never sticks in my brain. But it's that orange stuff that's like good for you. But I always forget what it's called. Hey Buzz, how'd you get? All right, let's go plant these bush tomatoes out in the outside garden. So you can see we've got a bit of weeding done. We've got some not that you can probably see them because they're tiny, but I've planted some leeks in the end here because they were just leftovers. So what I thought is I might plant tomato plants between each of these, just the bush variety so they don't get too big and just see how they go. All right, now where I planted these tomatoes, down here, the soil is definitely not as good as in the greenhouse. It's still a bit hard it's not soft and fluffy but I'm a big fan of just giving it a go I don't have the time or money to improve this bed before all these tomatoes need to go on the ground so they might not work out great but I'm a big fan of just giving it a go see what happens and if I get something great if I don't get anything oh well I tried but I definitely won't get anything if I don't put them in the ground at all some of, these, some of these other varieties, I'm going to wait and plant them. These Amish paste, they're, um, they're still a bit small. I've got another tray of Amish paste that um, yeah, is a bit small still. So I'll give them another week or so to grow bigger. And gives me another week or so to weed the gardens out and give them a place to live. All right, I'm going to head inside because it is starting to get pretty warm out here. Um, even though it's much nicer today, the humidity is not as high, but it's still pretty hot. So I'm going to head inside, cool off a bit, finish off this gardening this afternoon, do some mulching and things. But thanks for hanging out with me today. Until next time. Bye. The rest of the dingo pack. I see my home.